Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound and this video is gonna be something similar like part 8 in the sound quality in-car playlist. Um, actually part 9, sorry, I have to correct myself, that was part 9 when it was about tuning. At that time I was tuning with a Helix DSP Pro Mark II. So if you have a Helix product, if you haven't seen that video, go and check it out. Um, and in this one I'm going to use a Zapco DSP uh, Z8 IV Mark II. Similar, very similar DSPs, um, similar system, three-way front end and a sub in the trunk you will see, uh, using Room EQ Wizard and a Umic One microphone. And it, it's really useful, honestly. When, when people, you know, start topics on, on Facebook groups and, you know, they ask around about, you know, how to tune and uh, I'm like, no, just watch these videos, come on. You know, don't waste your time on forums when there are so many people sharing really useful videos. And not just me, there are so many others. In that video, in part nine, in the description, I linked in um, someone else's video showing really useful things about tuning and how to detect phase relation between mid bass and sub. Um, then I also linked in Audio Frog's tuning guide. I, I had direct links to uh, Mini DSP's page where you can have a step to step guide to, to learn how to use Rumi Q Wizard. Um, so just just go for it come on you know don't waste your time on forums until you don't sit down for a few hours watching these videos and checking those links read just like back in the school i know many people are you know getting uh, lazy and older and they just don't want to do it they want to be spoon fed this is now a slap to your face go and do it read it if you don't want to read it and if you don't want to watch these videos then you will have to pay someone that's simple as that so that's end of the ranting. Check out this video. Um, this is really straight down to the point. Uh, I was showing this video to the client uh, when he came to collect his car. I wanted him to understand uh, everything, what was happening in the system. Um, and you will also get an idea about what you can do with this Zapco DSP. So check this one out. All right, so this is gonna be a quick crash course for people who want to understand tuning of freeway and want to see how a DSP uh, DSP4 Mark II works from Zepco. That easy to use. Um, quickly I show the setup. Uh, we have freeway up front with Hertz. Gary Watt mid bass is it Hertz? Mm -hmm. It's the HSK range. Yeah okay so this is not the ML not the more expensive it's, no. it's the lower model mid bass in the doors. Doors are well uh, deadened. Then Audible Physics RAM 3A widebands using uh, we're using for mid range, and then the RG50 for tweeter, and then we have the Helix Q12W at the back in a 1.2 cubic foot sealed box. And we have different sources. We still have the old PATRS from the previous build, and you can also stream to Zapco DSP on Bluetooth. So you only have one page with this thing. That easy. Um, and actually now I'm explaining it in the way that you also understand what's happening, not just others who watch the video. Mm -hmm. So you have eight channels, obviously, and then you have to patch uh, what channel is, is getting what input. So first channel gets uh, left signal, next one gets right signal, and then it goes tick 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 tick. And then on the subs, you could also have front left for one side of the sub and then front right to the other side of the sub, but you won't get... Uh, full level out of the output on the sub um, unless you select both of them then you will get way more level coming out of the DSP so you won't have to turn the gain up on the amplifier that much um, normally I always start with time alignment then uh, I, I know that the speakers are very very close to um, to optimal uh, to the listening position time wise um, and actually, this, this device is pretty good, even with the uh, automatic uh, calculation. People who don't know how to set time alignment um, properly, then they can get really good results even with this thing. You just literally measure the speakers from your, well, now we are sitting on the right-hand side. You measure, uh, you know, the speakers, let's say, just from your um, driver's side. Uh, ear, so here from the right ear, measure the distance from the speakers, 
type them in and then hit calculation. It will do all the time alignment for you. Easy. And then of, of course, you, you know, you measure the sub as well, roughly how far it is in the trunk. That has a bit of a leeway because, you know, eight inch here, eight inch there, or these are now in centimeters though. But you can, uh, can you select that? You can select that. No, it's, it's, it's a given, it's fixed, it's centimeter. So yeah, people in the US may struggle. They need a new tape measure. <laughs> Um, so that easy time alignment sorted. Then you just have to make sure that the speakers are in phase, but when you, uh, do your measurements, then you would see that anyway. Okay. Quickly. Uh, so normally I always play a uh, ping noise on the full uh bandwidth of the mid-range first because that's going to be the most important driver so i want to see what the driver is capable to do so that's the left mid uh playing from 100 hertz all the way up um and then now it looks pretty rough it's uh, on on a 5 db scale you always want to make sure that you have at least 5 db scale not bloody 20 dB scale, or some people do, this is 20 dB scale. It looks pretty linear now, right? Everyone would think that, oh, that, that's fine. Okay, you don't have to do anything. You want at least 5 dB scale, then you will see, oh, this is 50, beautiful. Then you will see the real problems. So, this looks messy, but what can you see from it? Obviously, these drivers have a huge peak from like 150, starting at 150, all the way to 400, which is partially caused by the pods, which are slightly small, and also because of the location where they are at, because the, the that's corner loaded right now by all the glosses and everything. It's the same even at home when you put a speaker into the corner of your room, you will get way more bass. It's the same thing with the mid-range in that area from the listening position that you get so much boost there that it makes it really like, you know, muffled and... Uh, you don't want that. Um, so you have the options to cross it somewhere higher and then the crossover would cut that peak straight away, but you will still have to do EQing because that will show up in even in your crossover slope. But um, at least we can see that it, it doesn't struggle to play down to 150, 160 from a, a tiny little three inch driver. That's not bad. So there's a bit of a scoop out in that range between 500 and 1K. Uh, it's a bit more sensitive between one-ish up to four, then again scooped out, and then you have the breakup point of the cone there, which is quite characteristic for wide bands, and that gives the illusion that you have really nice top ends because it's it's doing the tweety tweety job there. Uh, but we are not using it now full range, so actually it was crossed at uh, ta, 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 hang on left mid crossover. Okay, so I take this one out. Also, you don't necessarily need one uh, 48th of an octave uh, resolution on a measurement because it, it just shows too much information. And you know, you don't want to get into getting all those dips and, and peaks sorted out because it's, it's, you know, you could use 50 EQ bands to, to make it perfect, um, especially on a 2 dB scale. I would rather suggest to everyone to do at least one sixth of an octave smoothing on it. And then, then you see the major areas, the major problems. And then, you know, you have to deal with that peak, that peak, make it linear. Even on the slope, I can see a peak there. So then after the EQ job, you end up having something like that. So that's that speaker. But I show it now with pin noise, you will even hear it through the phone and then now Gary will definitely hear it so that's now with the EQ once I disable the EQ you can hear those big peaks and, and it's just colored as hell and then then people start to, you know, oh, which speaker should I change it to? There's nothing wrong with the speaker in a car. Um, 
yes, you need a good installation, a good location for it, but most of the times it will require tuning, nothing else. So, yes, we have crazy, crazy level of EQing. And what's beautiful in this DSP is that you have a fully parametric EQs. So, uh, so on band one, you know, I can use it anywhere. You just literally type the frequency in, then you just hit tab, it jumps to the next one, to the level. You can type that in to um, 0.1 of a dB accuracy. And then you have the quality that you can also type in. You can even type in 7.127. You know, the, the quality is so refined on it that that's what people don't realize that actually this shit can do crazy stuff. And so you can really get the EQ to the right place where you need it and not just roughly there at given fixed bands so this way you know i i use 229 689 1555 2757 you know the eqs are at very given accurate points with given cues so then you can get really great response out uh, of the drivers in the car so let's put this one down for now we go back to here then we go to right mid EQ. So from right mid, actually I showed this. So I had left mid full, right mid full. So this is also very important in an install, if you want good results. That's actually left and right drivers measure pretty similar. Yes, there's, there's a difference here in the lower mid range. But otherwise, it's pretty similar. Where you have big peak, it's there. Mid-range area is, is similar too. And the top end is similar too. So even without EQing, this car images well. But, of course, it's too messy. So then we end up having left mid EQed and right mid EQed. So what you want to achieve to make them very similar to left and right. Then this way... Even with ping noise, they should sound very similar. So now this is left, then right. Left. I don't know how it's going to go through the phone, but believe me, when you sit here, they sound very similar. Possibly even on the back seat. But without that, they would sound very different. So, back to measurements. So that's sorted. We have the mid-range. It's crossed that 290 with 24 dB and then 3K, 24 dB. And then even the slope is EQ'd out because if you have a peak in the slope, that will affect uh, even the range where the tweeter plays and then you will see a peak there then or the summation between the two drivers won't be perfect. Then I have the mid-pair once... Uh, they are individually EQ'd and they look very similar. Then I play them uh, with uncorrelated ping noise and then have a look at how they behave together and then EQ them as a pair. So then you get a really nice linear response of the pair. Then from that, we jump onto tweeters. So this was uh, where's left tweeter. Yeah, left tweeter. Um, yeah, that's already EQ'd. So that was with the crossover. It was showing peaks here and there. So I got rid of that. And the same way, right tweeter that had a bigger peak. And that is the thing. People would think that, you know, it has a peak in between three and a half and 7K. So it's pretty harsh. It wants to cut your head off. And it's not the tweeter. It's just the environment. And then people would say, oh, you know, this is not a soft dome. This is a metallic tweeter. It must be, you know, really harsh. Um, I want to swap it out. And then, no, it's it's just the response. Once you flatten out, it's it's just as soft as a bloody, well, you know, people say a oh, soft dome. It sounds like a soft dome. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, 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 right tweeter also EQ'd. So I take the... And then you end up having two very similar looking tweeter responses. And then the tweeter pair. So from that, you end up having mid and tweet summation. When your timing and your crossover, when your timing is correct and your crossover slopes are clean, levels are set, 
then you should have a nice summation and then linear response if you use 24 dB slopes. If something is not correct, you will see a dip here, or you won't see this summation. So, is that a word summation or just sum? Sum. Gary, correct me. You're not even sure? Sum. Sum. Okay. People get it. No. Exactly. So, then we jump onto mid bass. So, this was left mid bass uh, set at 70 hertz, 24 dB up to 250. And this is not ideal, the curve, what you see. And then from that, we ended up having that. So I got rid of all these peaks. Even, you know, people cross at 250, they don't worry about anything above. They should. They should worry about, you know, the response all the way up to 500. They should really look at it because that's going to affect the mid-range. And then everything will sound muffled and then, you know, like a bit boxy and shit. So once it's, it's nicely EQ'd and, and cleaned out, it's going to change the game. And then the same way then we had right, right was really fucking peaky. So that's the big difference between left and right mid bass in this car. Um, that's this side was really peaky. I showed that with ping noise, it's, it's horrendous. So, so that's with the EQ. Look at that now, I disable it. Hang on, the other side. You can tell it sounds just like really boxy and, and it's pushed back and now it's nice and linear so that screws everything up if you don't know how to EQ that out and how to set it up and you will think ah oh, these drivers are not great enough no nope. mistake again so um, from that we ended up having right base EQ'd so then the two drivers look pretty similar I couldn't get rid of that area because there's a huge cancellation that shows up with finer accuracy it shows that there's an area where both side drivers have a cancellation at around 115 and in that area and it doesn't matter how much you can push into it it's not going to come back there's no point to worry too much about it so yeah they ended up like that and when they play in a pair they are all right but then of course where that cancellation is with both drivers that's going to appear when the pair plays together as well um, so carrying on then from that you know we play the front where well, was left a bit between front I have too many mid end tweets so yeah that was the mid end tweet uh, right base we can take out so we had the front mid-range on tweeter and then we had the mid-base drivers in a pair and then you play them together adjust it yes you may have to do a really fine time alignment adjustment steps here and there to see when they perfectly sum when they don't you will have a huge cancellation and i think i had a measurement for that no i deleted that while well, we have that on the sub and i should mute that bloody driver sorry so then subwoofer subwoofer was crossed at 50 and then yeah it shows beautifully linear response down to 10 hertz but then if you want to hear it linear you would need extra 3 db at least per octave so if it's doing this level at 50 at 25 it should be you know going up curving up and then at 10 it should go even further up now that's a difficult thing and I always say only true YB can do that in a car but this is definitely a huge peak and and you don't want that the car peaks at 50, uh, sorry 42 40 42 and it's just pushing everything in that range like crazy you can really go downtown and yeah let the boot fall apart Gary experienced that now with his new setup <laughs> so then after it's EQ'd all that is taken out and then the 25 hertz range is pushed a bit because we need a bit more low end on that to hear it linear and then so when the sub is not in phase with the mid bass up front you see that bang massive cancellation appears and then if it's in phase voila it just does it 
and then let's take everything else out from here. We don't need any of these anymore. So then, that was the meat based pair, yeah. So, you know, it sums pretty well. Yes, you have to adjust the sub level as well accordingly, and then you have the ideal curve. You want to keep it linear down to like 300 or 250. And then after that, you, you want to start to raise it 3 dB per octave to get the desired linearity to hear it linear, not flat. People always don't get what flat means and what linear means. Yes, many people like to take 3 dB per octave off above 2 kilohertz and then it would look like that. It would curve down. I don't like those systems. They just sound way too muffled. There's not enough detail. And, and then they say, oh, it's too harsh for me. Yeah, because you didn't do the tuning properly. And then I'm sure you have peaks here and there. And then, you know, then tweeters want to key you. And I have that all the time when people come to me with 4K drivers. They want to change them. I'm like, no, bring it to me, I tune it. And then they are like, wow. I'm like, yeah, there's no problem with those speakers. It's just more difficult to work with speakers which are very transparent and detailed because they show everything. And then if it's not tuned well, it, it shows the, the, the bad things really, really well. So, you know, with this really great EQ in that this DSP gives you, you can really go crazy. Um, obviously, that's where you can swap phase. And I had to actually change polarity of phase on the tweeters. But everything else was uh, in phase relative to each pairs. Then you can also select speakers in pairs. And then when you do time alignment, then it's going to drag everything, even if you just pull one one driver you can select all six of them and then you can pull the whole front end in relation to the sub or vice versa um, also gives you the feature uh, to have the solo feature to listen to just just a single speaker when you play everything in the system so you just click on solo and then that single speaker is going to play for that given moment so it's 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 a good good tool um, but the rest is, is pretty pretty standard. You know, you can select uh, your filter type here for the driver. Um, you have the slopes there all the way to 140, well, 48 dB per octave. But there's the tweeter. We don't need a, a low pass filter for the tweeter. Um, and it's, it's just that, that easy because that, that's your only surface. And then that's it. You select your inputs, what you're working on, and you patch. And then you just hit save as, you save the file, then after that, write to the device, you select uh, the whichever you want to work on, number three, save, you, you type in the, the name of the preset and it saves it to the controller. Easy peasy. We don't save it now, but you can see we have one uh, sound quality preset, which is more linear, cleaner, and then one daily wear. Uh, mid bass is crossed a bit higher, sub is also crossed a bit higher and it can really go crazy and and it just wants to take the car apart. When you want to lose it, you can lose it. So that's pretty much it. Unfortunately, I, I couldn't demonstrate music in this video because as soon as I play anything, copyright just, just kills it. And in many countries, it doesn't even allow people to watch the video so unfortunately I have to keep it copyright free um, but you can go on the channel and check out these are videos I shared a video actually yesterday of this car what it sounds like inside outside yes it's a phone recording don't take it super seriously you know I know people listen to my teaser videos with a pair of headphones and then some people say that oh that car sounded so much better I really like that setup how did you get to that conclusion? Oh, I have a really good pair of headphones. My God, you know, it's, it's recorded with my phone. And what it, what it records at that given time, I have no control over. Um, then, you know, it's, it's uploaded to my laptop, then it's edited, it goes through a video editor, then it gets uploaded um, up onto YouTube and social media here and there to the time you hear it. It's who knows what it sounds like. Sometimes I'm just lucky and I managed to record uh, music in cars sounding better. A few years ago, I had a previous iPhone which recorded in mono and somehow 
it was still more realistic because there was not that much compression on it and it was recording all the way down to the you know all the way down to 20 hertz you could hear it through the headphone now i have a iphone xs whatever it is um, it records in stereo so in a way it can give you a better more realistic space but it has hell of a compression on it and it doesn't record the lows really well at all so don't take those videos too seriously but if, if if it's something that you just want to get a bit of inspiration or idea about these setups then you can check out those teaser videos as well um, but hopefully this video helps you guys to understand i i can't emphasize it probably even in 10 years time i will be the same and i will tell people to you know get their systems tuned if you have fine if you finally have a fully active system you have the control over it with a good dsp which has fully parametric EQ, fully parametric EQ, right? Before you buy a proper DSP, check it out. You don't want fixed EQ points or limitation where you can use EQs and whatnot. No, you want a fully parametric one. Now, so I said it for the third time, so hopefully you get it. Um, and, then, and then just tune it. If you don't want to play around it forever, there are people uh, who offer tuning um, here in UK and worldwide everywhere in the US I know many guys who, who do tuning for others and there are a few people who do remote tuning as well um, and it's doable it's very doable of course it doesn't give everything but I would say you can get an 8 out of 10 uh, result even without the person sitting in the car I mean the person who tunes and then, and the most important thing is that you can learn the whole process uh, during that remote tuning Currently, I don't offer this service yet. I'm just way too busy dealing with everything else. You know, I have dealerships, distributions, installations, dealers. I have to deal with so many things plus life that um, I can't do it yet, but um, I'm working on it and I try to make it um, way easier for everyone. I know Nick in the US offers it and once you have you know, Ruby Q Wizard, you have the microphone, uh, the whole system is ready to go with good internet connection, it can be done. You know, the person that, who tunes the car can control your laptop remotely, um, then you just need basically a video connection. So he or me, you know, anyone who can do remote tuning, they can guide the person how to measure, what to do, and then the rest is just happening remotely and then you get an explanation, you see exactly in front of you on your laptop what what's happening and then um, believe me the the result is going to be 100 percent 100 percent better i whoever comes to me to get their cars tuned i have never had anyone who would have said that sorry pete i don't like this tune this is worse than what i came with never i can put my head on it what's not you can go away with your car uh, without paying anything to me for that day if you say the tuning is worse of course you won't take my preset you can drive home with your own preset but uh yeah i'm happy to put my head on it 100 percent your car will sound better and you will be very thankful because you won't waste your time on 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 more speaker buying and whatnot you will just get it done and, and you'll be happy for good you don't need weeks months and whatever for tuning forget it you have to do it once and properly that's it so guys this is it for this one this is going to be another long video oh my god uh, hopefully this is another useful one for you so check out the description in this, this one as well then you will see the other tuning video and whatnot and um yeah just keep keep pushing um yeah please don't don't expect me to answer every single question and then give you long answers here in youtube or everywhere i do as much as i can you see i'm always around but i'm also limited if you want a one-to-one -one personal um you know session then you can book me and and we can talk about it i offer um offer that service on an hourly rate or you know if i can figure out how to do remote tuning comfortably um within my time frame as well then i will do it as well because i know many people can't go to a shop because they they are so far away or they live in a different country without any help so trust me i'm working on it um but hopefully you know this gives something at least a bit of idea for you as well that it's, it's really really super important especially when people buy uber expensive amplifiers with the most expensive dsp and speakers and everything they spend you know tens and tens of grands 
um, and their installation may, may be lacking as well and they don't want to spend a few hundred pounds or dollars for a tuning it's just doesn't make any sense um, but hey ho those people who want the help they take it in they use it everyone is happy and I also find the right people um, who need my help so guys feel free to share this video and 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 just spread the word spread the word out that you know it's 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 all out there this can be done it's not magic it's just physics I always say um, and subscribe to the channel then you don't miss the next one because I, I I try to I try to really push it and then bring as many videos as possible for you guys so this industry can go somewhere um, I cut it here now I'm off actually um, I'm off for a month I'm going on a holiday so hopefully you are all safe you are with your families everyone is safe uh, during these these crazy times and I'll be back I'll be back when I have time and I will share more videos um, yeah whatever take care